I used to think there were only two types of amps that mattered. You were either team tube amp or team solid state, and there were no if, ands, or buts about it. And while on a technical level that might be true, there are a lot of nuances that I didn't quite consider. Subcategories that endlessly attempt to bridge the gap as well as find new methods of giving guitar players options, some of which seemed almost impossible in a not so distant past. But times change, and they keep changing, and eventually so did my mind. I guess that's a real story. You see, the year was 2017. And I was working at this little locally known music shop that they called Guitar Center. And I was actually having quite a bit of difficulty when it came to finding out how to connect with my coworkers. Now, as a much older and experienced man, I now know that that's a problem that a lot of different people have and that it's a very normal thing to go through. But at the time, it felt like the end of the world. And at the time, I had tried literally everything to connect with them from small talk to big talk to learning about some of our mutual interests when it came to like bands that were big at the time, but much to my dismay, even Paramore's gigantic album After Laughter did little to nothing to further some of the conversations that I was having with my coworkers. I mean, at one point I was ready to just give up and admit that outside of our shared love of the electric guitar and happened to be working at the same workspace, there was really nothing we were ever going to have in common. But then I started thinking, I mean, like really thinking, like, why does that have to be a bad thing? I mean, we had this shared common interest that we were surrounded by day in and day out. So even if I couldn't connect with them on like pop culture, culture topics or what was going on on Billboard 100, why don't I just try and like lean in on guitars? So I did. And this was going to be quite difficult because at the time I didn't really know that much about gear. I was pretty much trapped in the world of Stevie Ray Vaughan wannabes who only knew about tube screamers and strats. I mean seriously my vocabulary guitar wise literally didn't exist outside of those two terms. I really thought that I was going to just wow them and overly impress them with my knowledge of the vintage custom shop strats that SRV graced the world with in the 90s. But but the more and more I tried to do this, the more I noticed that they were really, really impressed with talking about like modern gear. They would go on for hours and hours talking about the Taylor GS Mini and other pieces of gear that regularly retailed for like under 500 bucks. So I knew that like all of the X-Men cartoons that I watched growing up, I would have to adapt and evolve to their conversations. So as they keep talking, I start paying attention. I start really listening. And as my ears open, I start noticing patterns, like the pieces of gear that they talk about most often and get the highest praise. And the one piece of gear that they keep coming back to over and over again, the Boss Katana. Now, even though I was a nerd who watched X-Men, I wasn't really familiar with Samurais. And I thought to myself, there is literally no way that this Boss Katana practice amp could actually be that good or any good at all. I mean, I just sold my first ever tube amp and I used that money to buy my first ever big Marshall tube amp. And I didn't want to spend any time actually talking about this like weird desktop amp that everyone was like obsessed with for some reason. But what I didn't know was time it would start passing. I mean, like really fast, like six years time. And eventually I would buy one of these amps and it would literally change everything for me. Okay, that's a bit of an exaggeration. It didn't change everything, but I did like it so much that eventually I did get my hands on the MK2 artist head stack. But no matter how long I played this thing for, I eventually had to remember that the Katana wasn't the only one. You see, there was this very similar amp that people had also simp for that actually came out years before the Katana had even released. It was called the Yamaha THR and I had seen them, I had researched them, and up until about a week ago I had forgotten that at one point I had even purchased one. Yeah, you heard me correctly. You see, when I first got really into recording I thought it would be a great option for some low wattage tones while staying relatively quiet. Turns out what I didn't know at the time is that 10 watts cranked can still get very, very loud. And that was at my old apartment where my neighbors were as sensitive to sound as they've ever been. I mean those walls were thin, but luckily for us... That isn't gonna happen today. This, friends, is the Yamaha THR30, and it happens to be a solid-state desktop practice amp. It weighs about 10 pounds, and it has pretty much all the effects that you would expect from any other modern-day modeler. But to be completely and totally honest, none of that really matters to me. Like, don't get me wrong, the specs are important, but there's a bigger, more important question that I kind of want to ask here. In this world of modern innovation, where I've seen the digital modeler and the solid-state modeler take leaps and bounds, can the same be said for, well, the desktop practice amp? So I'm thinking I want to keep this really simple. No pedals, no gimmicks, just one mic, one amp, and seeing where it goes. I was thinking about just going line out, but I genuinely do want to hear what this thing sounds like just in the room. Thank you. 
Okay, so I've heard this thing, I've played it, and I'm not going to lie, there's a lot that we need to talk about. And the first of which actually goes back to my original question, which is, in the modern day, how does something like this, a practice amp, a desktop amp, actually hang tonally? And, well, I did like the sounds that I was hearing come out of the THR, I kind of threw that question out of the window pretty immediately. And I think that's largely due to the fact that when you start to think about the Yamaha THR, or even the Katanas, or any other practice amps in that sphere, you pretty much know what to expect when it comes to sound quality and tone, and it becomes less about the sound or the tonal qualities and characteristics, and more about what different utilities that a piece of gear can actually provide. And even within that window of utility for the THR specifically, it came down to three things, portability, utility, and versatility. Now, when it comes to portability, which is probably the biggest contributing factor in all of this, I think we have to be realistic about when and where people are gonna be using something like a Yamaha THR. It's mostly gonna be in the bedroom or in the home studio as like a practice amp. And while I know it's not illegal to bring this thing live or to use it as a live amp, and I've seen people do it online, I think it's pretty realistic to say that's not what the majority of people are gonna be doing. Its biggest strength, especially if you're using the wireless function of being able to take it different places throughout the house, whether that be the attic or the basement, without having to lug anything heavy around, and still having the option of the headphone jack if you wanna keep it extra, extra quiet. Now, when it comes to the question of utility, I think there is something to be said about being honest about knowing that a lot of the larger studios in the world aren't just gonna keep THRs on hand to record Steve Vai's next hit album. But for the smaller recording purposes, people who want to do social media sync up audio that might be a big selling point especially with it not being a big device that takes up a lot of space and finally when it comes to the question of versatility similarly to when I first plugged this thing in and started playing it well I'm sure that this thing can take pedals I know that 99% of people are not going to be using something like this as a big pedal platform and whether that be because somebody's a beginner or they just don't feel like pulling all of their pedals out for a simple practice session it does need to be able to do a little bit of everything and I think that just generally goes into the very definition of a practice amp in the first place, you need something that every type of player could practice with, whether that be the jazz guy or the metal guy, without having to go into the deep, deep particulars of having to craft individual tones. I think I would find something like this helpful because most of my recorded tones end up coming out of like the Helix or the Oxbox through my speakers, and it is refreshing to hear the air move out of an actual amp, even if it is smaller, without having to completely obliterate my relationship with my neighbors. But on the other end of all of this, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you that it sounds better better than like a vintage 65 Princeton. It is a practice amp. And although I did like the tones, they're not filtered to do one specific thing really well. And I think that versatility can be either a pro or a con, depending on what you need. And I personally need a lot of things, but it doesn't matter what I need. What matters is what you need. So please let me know in the comments, do you have a THR? Have you tried one? What do you think of practice amps as a whole? Do you have a favorite? please let me know. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. It was actually really fun to be able to take a look at this thing, especially years after having forgotten that I owned one for the week and just seeing the little different things it could do, checking out the hall reverb, the chorus, everything about that. If you wanna know anything more about the THR, I put the links in the description. Make sure to check it out. It's one of the best ways to support the channel if that's something you wanna do, or if you're just curious about any of the other gear that I use in this video make sure to check out those links. Also, thank you so much to my patrons. There's some good stuff there if you want to check it out. Like and subscribe if you had a good time. And most importantly, like most important of all, have a fantastic day.